Now, something I get asked is why I didn't get a rifle rest that has both the front rest and the rear rest connected. Well, there's a reason. Um, this is a bench rest free recoil system. Uh, some of the cheaper rests attempt to actually arrest the weapon and prevent it from actually recoiling. Uh, they'll even have a pocket back here that the butt slides into. Um, but this is not really a good idea. You want your weapon to recoil straight backwards in a straight line so that it recoils exactly the same way every single time. Now before we ever even start shooting, we're actually going to aim our forward rest and our rear sandbag at our target. Because we don't want to set this up on, a, on our desk, on our shooting bench, and then have to wrestle with the gun in order to get it aimed at the target. Okay. Usually this section right here I set to a neutral halfway across position. This is our windage cable. And then with this leg right here, this is what I use to aim with. You usually just set a cleaning rod on it. Like so, and sight down the cleaning rod, and it should go straight to your target. Alright, so next, this is our forward stop. You want the front end of your stock, when you push the weapon all the way forward, it's going to stop against this. And then back here in your sandbag, you would want your hook to be sticking out just a little ways so that when the rifle recoils backwards it doesn't fall off your sandbag. Last thing that I put on is basically this. This is actually screwed in and it's a big 3 8 inch aluminum plate that attaches to the bottom of the fore end stock here and it's basically my tracking system. And that's what this is called. This is a tracking system and it's a free recoil setup. It allows the weapon to just slide straight back when you fire, push it forward again with your shoulder, fire again, slide straight back. Very, very precise. Next thing that I do, and this is in the actual sighting procedure, is I'm going to set my relative height. This knob right here allows me to telescope it up and down. Tighten that down. Next up, this knob back here loosens this and allows me to make a more microscopic adjustment up and down. Once I get these two set, both are locked off and then you don't ever touch them again throughout the shooting procedure. From then on, any height adjustments that you do should be back here with this knob right here. This is far finer adjustment and it's a lot smoother. Your windage you do with this knob right here. And this is a this is a pretty it's pretty darn smooth and it tracks really nice. Um the only complaint that I have about a cable system like this is that there's a bit of a delay between when you turn it and when the gun actually moves. So if you're spotting for wind and stuff, this kind of tends to be a little bit of a handicap. There are other re free recoil rests out there that have a direct mechanical link to the head that moves it instantly. Those are much nicer, but they're also usually three to four times as expensive. But this, I really do like. I mean, it works great for me. I'm not terribly good at reading the wind yet anyways. So once again, I'll show you the forward stop. You fire the gun, bang, it recoils, goes back. Push it forward till you feel the actual stop. And then you shoot again. Something else I recommend doing is bringing a bubble level in and just laying it across these front legs here. This way you can get your rest level and you do want it level parallel to the earth. 
a final note about sandbags is the heavier they are, the better. A lot of you are thinking like, oh, we'll just put lead in it, right? No, you cannot do that. F-class rules, you cannot use lead in your rear sandbag. You must use sand. So there, there's all sorts of black graphite type sands out there that are almost as heavy as lead. They're very, very close. And they're nice and dense. They actually settle better too.